Hey there, um, in this tutorial we're going to look at how we find the market portfolio. And the market portfolio, as you've noticed in your reading, is the percentage makeup of a portfolio of two stocks that maximizes the level of return that you can get per unit of risk. And we call that the Sharpe Ratio. Um, the return we can get in excess of the risk free rate divided by the standard deviation just tells us how much return we can get per unit of risk. And of course, in any portfolio or any investor, they want to do the best that they can for return per risk. So let's put that together. First thing I'm going to do is utilize the data that I found at the end of chapter 11 in homework problem number 9, where we were given the share prices of Coca-Cola and IBM between 1990 and 2012. I took that data and I calculated the return, newer value divided by older value minus one, for both Coke and IBM throughout this time period. So the next thing I'm going to do is calculate some statistics on my individual returns. Then I'm going to create a portfolio. I'll find the expected return on the portfolio, the standard deviation. I'll compare this to a risk-free rate, and I'll try to figure out which portfolio combination, which weight of the two stocks in my portfolio is going to give me the most return per unit of risk. Okay, so my average return, Excel command average, 19.84% for Coke. My variance, Fifteen point seven five. My standard deviation, or I could just take the square root of the variance. My covariance. I need two stocks, two separate sets of arrays. It doesn't matter if you put them Coke first and then IBM, or IBM first or Coke. It's a symmetrical function. And my correlation. Coke. IBM, a small negative correlation. That's my Coke data. To get my IBM data, I'm just going to grab those three, average, variance, standard deviation, pull them to the right. So IBM's average return is 15%, the variance, 13%, and the standard deviation, 37%. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is use this data. I'm actually going to give you the formulas for these so you don't have to keep rewinding, hopefully. The next thing we're going to do is put together some of these things to create a portfolio. So first I have to decide what percentage of my assets I want to have in Coke and what percentage in IBM. So I'm just going to throw out a number, 25% for Coke, and the rest goes in IBM. So I can say 1 minus 25%, that's going to give me 75% in IBM. So that if I want to change this number, the percentage in Coke, IBM will change automatically. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate my expected portfolio return. 25% of my money is going to be invested in Coke, earning 19.84%. And the remaining 75% of my investment is going to be in IBM, earning 15.38%. What that means is that my portfolio will have an expected return of 16.49%. In the homework, I use the term mean return, and you'll often hear that. A mean return basically means the historical average. So over the past however long, right, over the time period that we looked at, a 25%, a portfolio invested 25% in Coke and 75% in IBM would have had an average return or a mean return of 16.49%. The standard deviation, we're going to use that formula that we looked at in an earlier chapter, but we're going to see that our Portfolio standard deviation. The standard deviation is going to be the square root of the variance. So we're going to take the square root of the variance of the portfolio. 
So where is our portfolio going to get this risk? Well, part of it is going to come from the percentage invested in Coke. So we're going to take the percentage invested in Coke and we're going to square it and we're going to multiply it by the variance that Coca-Cola contributes. And then to that we're going to add the variance contributed by IBM. So 75% of our portfolio squared multiplied by the variance that IBM contributes. And then to that we're going to add two times the percent invested in Coke times the percent invested in IBM times the covariance of the two stocks will give us the standard deviation of our portfolio. So there is our portfolio standard deviation with some formulas. The next thing we want to know is what our risk-free rate is. Um, in the assignment, Chapter 9, it tells us that our risk-free rate is 5%. So our risk premium, uh, sometimes known as the market risk premium, is just the return that our portfolio is going to give us over the risk-free rate. So we could earn 5% on our investment, but if we invest, if, I'm sorry, we could earn 5% on our investment if we invested in a risk-free asset. Um, a savings account or a treasury bond or something like that, but instead we're going to invest in some portfolio, right? So that means that we're going to get an extra 11.49%. So the Sharpe ratio, which basically tells us the ratio of this extra return we get to the, stand, to the risk we need to take in order to get that return, it's equal to our portfolio return minus the risk-free rate otherwise known as the risk premium, divided by the standard deviation that we need or that we're going to get. So how much risk do we need to take to get that little bit extra return? Our ratio here is 0.39. So the market portfolio is the portfolio that gets us the most extra return per unit of risk, and we're going to use Solver to figure out what that particular portfolio is. What is that market portfolio? So I start under my data tab and I go to Solver, and I click it, and it should come up, but my backup disk is starting to think, so it's going to take a second. There we go. So I want to set my objective cell, I15, to its maximum value by changing the percentage that I have invested in Coca-Cola. And now I'm going to say solve it, and it's going to think for a second, and it's going to ask me if I'm happy with the return, so I'm going to keep my solver solution. So the highest Sharpe ratio I can get with my investment in Coke and IBM is going to be 0.48, and that means I'm going to have to invest 54% in Coke and 45.5% in IBM. And we're going to call that portfolio that maximizes the Sharpe ratio, we're going to call that the market portfolio, and then we're going to use that in the next example where we decide how we need to manage our, a certain dollar amount. We're going to manage $5,000, and we're going to see what our return could be.